Hey guys, it's Mark from Shopkit here. I'm gonna run through with you uh, my tips to make Lightroom run faster. So I am here in the import uh, module and the first tip that I have for you is to always, always build smart previews. So you'll see this in the top right hand corner under file handling. Um, there's lots of advantages of using smart previews. I won't run into those now. Um, just simply make sure you build them because this renders a smaller version of your raw file um, that you're still able to edit just as you would do with the original raw. Um, but it's much smaller, much um, faster for Lightroom to process. So everything will be a lot snappier. So do that, please. And the second tip that I have is to build um, standard size previews. So again, up in file handling, you'll see that there's a few options. Minimal, I find it's a bit too small. Uh, embedded in Sidecar, this is more if you want to start editing your photos as soon as they get imported into Lightroom. So while the photos are still um, being imported, you can edit them. That's not really relevant to me. And um, I assume that unless you're a sort of a sports journalist or some kind of journalist who needs to be able to edit photos as soon as they hit the Lightroom catalog and send them off to maybe a, a wire or something like that, I don't think it will be relevant to you. And that kind of slows the process down of the import and also uh, makes um, navigating from one photo to the next slightly slower as well. One-to-one -one is only for people who really need to zoom in on every single photo to 100%. So unless you need that, um, I really recommend that you just leave it on standard. That's kind of like the best um, back, best middle ground, I guess, for um, the, the, the preview size. All right, so tip number three. So if we come out of Lightroom for a second, and if you find where Lightroom, the uh, Adobe Lightroom folder is located on your computer. So for me, it's in applications. And here you can see Adobe Lightroom CC, above that Adobe Lightroom, and actually Lightroom Classic. So if you click on the one that's most relevant to the one that you have, um, and go to Get Info, be slightly different on a, on a uh, Windows. I'm not familiar with Windows, but I'm sure you'll be able to work it out. Uh, and if you have a retina screen or high resolution, some kind of 4K monitor, you will see this open in low resolution in the underneath general. Um, so make sure that is checked. And what that'll do is when you open, when you'll have to close Lightroom and reopen it if you've already got it open. But when you do end up opening it, you'll notice that, you might notice that the, the text and the icons, the buttons, etc., anything to do with the user interface are slightly pixelated. Um, I can't really tell the difference, but if you look closely, you can see, and you will. It won't really affect your um, the user experience, in my opinion. It won't affect it at all. But what it will do is help Lightroom run slightly faster. So that is a uh, that's my third tip. Fourth tip. Okay, so with one of the oh before i run into this i should probably show you just very quickly which lightroom i am using so as you can see this is a version of the lightroom classic where does it say it not in there oh there you go 8.3.1 i just got rid of it 8.3.1 release so these tips will work um, as of lightroom 6 some of them may not work uh, for the previous versions, but as long as you're using Lightroom 6 or Lightroom Classic, or hopefully when you're watching this, these tips will still be relevant. Let's go into my next one. So if you go into File and Preferences, sorry, it's up here, Lightroom Classic Preferences, and into Performance. So it's already highlighted. There's this one here at the top left. It says Use Graphic Processor. So that may be ticked by default, make sure that it's turned off, even if you do have a really great graphics processor on your computer. I found that with this off, performance is just better. Um, you don't get kind of a glitchiness when you navigate from one photo to the next. So have a go with that. It, obviously, it will depend on what computer, what processor, all that kind of thing that you're running, but I do recommend that you experiment a little just to see what's best for you. Next up is use smart previews for editing. So by this stage, you've imported the photo with a smart preview. And what you'll need to make sure also, again, in preferences and under performance is that here, this checkbox is checked. Use smart previews instead of originals for image editing. And that does what it says. So when, like, when you're editing, even though I have the raw file uh, here, um, I'm able, uh, Lightroom, 
takes precedence and uses the uh, smart preview version of the file. So ah, I tell the light, I've only got the original photo here. So let me just build this on the fly. That's something that you can do that I've neglected to mention before. You can create smart previews individually. Um, I'm not quite sure why I haven't imported this one with a smart preview, but do as I say, not as I do. Let me just navigate back to this one. Everything's running very slow because I'm doing a screen recording. Uh, but take it from me that my Lightroom does actually run really fast when I'm not doing this. Okay, so as you can see here, it says original plus smart preview of this photo. So when I edit this, because I check that checkbox before you smart previews for editing, it will use the smart preview, not the raw file. Okay, so number six, increase your camera's raw cache. So once again, in preferences and file handling. So, oh. No, it's not in performance still, my mistake. So by default, I think this is set to around one gigabyte. So just double check. Um, I've increased mine to 200 gigabytes. Anything over 20 gigabytes is gonna make a lot of difference to the speed of your uh, Lightroom performance. Every time you view or edit a raw image when you're in the develop module, Lightroom's got to generate an up-to-date preview. And if you create this, make this cache slightly bigger, then Lightroom is able to save um, these previews in the cache and um, navigating from one photo to the next is made a lot quicker. And also the develop module as well as snappier I've found. So just have an experiment with that. I've just maxed it out to 200. You could go higher, but I've noticed that it doesn't really make that much difference. Um, following on from this, obviously you need a computer that does have enough hard drive space and also a very fast hard drive obviously helps the most with this kind of um, work where you are reading from the hard drive often. So solid state drive, a fast solid state drive will definitely pay dividends and um, increase your performance, the Lightroom performance in the long run. Uh, the next tip is about the order of your edits. Now, on the Adobe site, they recommend that you edit in a certain order in order to in order to, to make your Lightroom um, run as fast as possible. Now, this is particularly relevant if you do a lot of spot healing. So using things like the adjust, adjustment brush and this thing here, which is for um, cloning, spot removal, these things, you can do one or two of them. It shouldn't make much performance difference, but when you do many of them, then it starts to really slow down the performance of Lightroom, particularly on the photo that you're editing. So Lightroom actually recommends, Adobe recommends that you do the orders, the adjustments in a certain order. So I will link to this in the description below, but just to run through them quickly with you, number one, spot healing, number two, lens correction, number three, transformations, number four, global adjustments, which means things like exposure and any of, anything in this top basic panel, basically. Um, number five is local adjustments. Number six is sharpening. Number seven is noise reduction. Now, that's a lot of stuff to remember. Obviously, I don't stick to this with every photo, but if there is a photo that I need to spot here or do a lot of tiny local adjustments, then I will start with those first, and then I'll add those final um, bigger exposure adjustments, contrast adjustments, etc. And as a final tip, when you export the photo, that should be the time when you apply sharpening so as you can see in this export um, preset i've got here output sharpening i usually sharpen for screen and you can play around with that i like to have that on high so i don't actually apply any sharpening on the photo um, itself because that tends to slow things down okay so tip number eight um, you should pause the address and face lookup so this is going to be a bit hard for me to show you i think oh no here we go um, so top left hand corner if you click underneath your name and you'll see here address lookup. And I can't remember if this is set to on uh, default fault. I'm pretty sure it is, but you want to click the pause button there and pause there. Now make sure that when you import photos, Lightroom won't try and look up the faces in the background and do all the artificial intelligence processor, processor intensive tasks to try and recognize the people in your photo and it won't try and locate the GPS information that may or may not be in your uh, raw files. So turning those two things off, unless you absolutely need it, um, will help with um, import performance. So next tip is uh, about optimizing your catalog. So to do this, you need to go to file and down here is optimize catalog. I think in previous versions, it was under preferences, but 
what this will do, I'm not going to run it now because it's going to take a, a while. I do this every few months, as you can see, the last time I did it was in January. It's probably due for an update now. Um, if you notice things are running slowly and you've implemented all the other tips, then this is one to do maybe before you go to bed one night because it can take a while if you've got lots of photos. This will just be Lightroom's own attempt at kind of putting things back in order and seeing if you can kind of squeeze every last bit of performance out of it. So have a go at that one. Tip number 10. Okay, so this is kind of a generic tip about your computer. Um, and that's when, you, when buying a new computer, especially when you're going for um, a MacBook Pro, I found there's a, lot, there's a few different options. There's like, you know, there's the different cores that you can get, different GPU processor. RAM, hard drive space, and it can get quite confusing, especially if all you want to do is build like the ultimate computer for editing um, your pictures using Lightroom. Now, if you've been using Lightroom for a while, you'll know that despite all these updates that they've been putting out, Lightroom isn't the best optimized program out there. And I actually think that the reason why they've released Lightroom CC, the, the mobile version, if you want, is because they could start from the scratch and really optimize that for performance. And um, if I were to make a prediction, I'd say that they're going to abandon this Lightroom Classic, the 100% desktop based version of it in the future. Maybe it'll take a few years to um, migrate everything over to Lightroom CC, but I think they're going to leave this one in the dust and concentrate on Lightroom CC just because it's, uh, it's I assume it's going to be better optimized than this original one. So going back to the tip on investing in RAM, then when you're going computer shopping, I think RAM should be um, top of your list. So Adobe recommends that you need at least four gigabytes of RAM to run Lightroom. Um, and they say ideally 12 gigabytes or more. So from this that you can take that, um, you know, having as much RAM, especially if you're buying something like a MacBook Pro or something that's difficult to update RAM in the future, you should try and invest in the most RAM that you can. Um, depending on your computer, you might be able to buy some aftermarket RAM um, and put it in yourself. But uh, yeah, I like to spend a bit more money on the RAM of the computer and ignore things like the number of cores and um, other like hard drive disk space. I tend to, I like to have at least 500 gigabytes to a terabyte, but anything more than that, I think it's a bit of a waste of money because I tend to store most of my big files on external drives anyway. If you have a lot of more RAM, you'll be able to run um, programs concurrently. So what I mean by this is if you've got, if you're a heavy like tab user, like for instance, this, I've got four different, three different browsers open at the moment. I'm not using them, but they're running in the background just with tabs open. So this is like a RAM intensive task and having that in the background, no matter how well you've set up your Lightroom, it can affect the like the navigation and the editing simply because your computer is diverting some of its uh, processor power to those applications that you have in the background. So just having enough RAM will kind of cover you um, for those events and make Lightroom run snappier. Okay, let's move on to the next one. This is a great tip that not many people know um, just for making Lightroom run faster. And that's in the top right hand corner where you've got the histogram. This will usually be open by default. Close that unless you need it to for the photo, then I always recommend that that is closed and that'll make an immediate performance uh, speed boost to navigation, particularly in the this module, I forgot the name of it, you know what I mean, the library module, you'll be able to flip through photos much quicker. Like I said, I'm running the skip screen recording at the same time, so everything's up slightly sluggish, but close the histogram both in the library module and in the develop module, and that will make a nice speed boost. That'll give you a nice speed boost. Okay, so next tip, this is another generic one on when you're purchasing your camera. So obviously this might be a little bit too late. I assume you've got a camera already because you're using Lightroom. Um, but if you're shopping for a new camera, um, think wisely about how many megapixels it has. So all the big brands are releasing cameras with huge megapixels, a huge number of megapixels. So if we go back a couple of years, it started off with the Nikon D800s and then a bit later on, Sony A7R3s and those kind of cameras were coming out with like these huge 40, 42 megapixel sensors on them, which is all great. Um, but it does pose a few problems when you're editing the photos, particularly using something like Lightroom, which isn't that well optimized. And also if your computer isn't really fast, like mine is not. Um, I purchased an A7R3 when it was released, not really thinking about how that would affect my post-production performance. 
And I soon found that even creating smart previews, my Lightroom just grounded to a halt when I was trying to edit these, you know, 2000 image weddings. So that was the actual only reason that I got rid of that camera, funnily enough, because there wasn't a way to reduce the megapixel size when you were shooting raw. Some of the other cameras I know, even though they have these huge megapixel options like the D850 uh, or the D800, the new D810, I think, Nikon's D810, you can actually shoot in a medium raw or a small raw, which will reduce those 40 megapixels down to 20 megapixels, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it does seem a bit strange to buy a camera with so many megapixels and then not use them all. But then on the flip side, if you're not needing to have, if you're not needing to print things out huge or zoom in, um, you know, to see really fine details, then that might not be necessary to shoot all your images at the maximum resolution. So going back to the original tip, think wisely about how many megapixels you actually need. And these days, camera around 24 megapixels in my opinion is more than enough so if um, you're using something like a sony a7 III any of those kind of cameras that in my opinion have the perfect sort of middle point between too many red too many uh, megapixels and not enough megapixels to crop um, i think you'll be happiest there in my opinion um, but yeah let me know in the comments if you agree or not all right so tip number 13 we're almost there this is the last one this is also a very generic one, but also something that I think is important, and that's to use the latest version of Lightroom. So I showed you my version before. I'm using the most up-to-date version for the time that I'm recording this of Lightroom Classic. I do pay every month. I part, I'm subscribing, obviously, for the Classic CC Adobe subscription model, which I know isn't popular with a lot of amateurs. With professionals like myself, we've kind of bit the bullet because this uh, Adobe Lightroom and even Photoshop, they're essential for our roles as photographers. Um, some of us I know are using other products, which is fine, but I'd say the vast majority of photographers these days are using Lightroom still, and that will continue to be the case for the foreseeable future. So my point is, if you have stumped up for the subscription model, and even if you're an amateur or a beginner, I also recommend that you consider this. You know, it's paying around $14 a month. I know it's not small change and it does add up, but on the other hand, you are getting um, the latest version of not only Lightroom Classic, but also of Lightroom CC, and there's tons of great mobile features that I will link to in the description below. If you're using the latest version of Lightroom, you can rest assured that you are using the fastest version of Lightroom. There may be some small bugs in beta versions and all that, but by and large, the latest version will always run the fastest. Now, I stuck with Lightroom 6 for a good year. That's the standalone, the last standalone version of Lightroom. Um, until I finally decided, okay, I'm going to bite the bullet and actually pay each month for this software that I rely on heavily for my business. So I was kind of tight for the first year and just thought I don't want to pay another subscription fee, but then I realized it is essential to me. And to be honest, I haven't looked back. I kind of write that off as a business expense. I think even if I wasn't professional, I just write it off as one of those, you know, paying for Netflix at every month kind of expense. I just need this you know, I, I want this, so I pay for it. Um, but yeah, I noticed immediately a, a performance boost when I upgraded to Lightroom Classic CC from Lightroom 6. So that made it more, more than worth it for me, actually. I, I upgraded for other reasons, such as I wanted to be able to um, edit photos on all of my devices. I also wanted certain editing features that weren't available to me, like this DHA slider, which is excellent. That's not available in um, Lightroom 6. And a few of the other things that... Adobe were releasing specifically for the newer versions of Lightroom, the latest version of Lightroom. So just to sum this up, if you're really keen on getting the fastest editing experience, run through those 12 tips again and make sure that you've got them all down pat and then consider upgrading to the latest version of Lightroom if you haven't already. And I'll leave a link to that below. Okay, thanks very much, guys. I apologize about the sound. I haven't got the best microphone in the world, but I hope this was useful for you.